Hello, I'm Alec Westover, and today I'm going to tell you about research I conducted with William Kuzmo on cache-efficient parallel partition algorithms using exclusive read and write memory. The partition problem takes as input an array and a pivot value. I will represent the array with, uh, with rectangles whose heights correspond to the values in the array, and I'll represent the pivot value with this blue horizontal bar. The problem is to rearrange the elements in the array so that elements less than the pivot value occur before elements greater than the pivot value. The partition problem is a fundamental problem in computer science and is also important because its partitioning is used as a subroutine inside algorithms like parallel quicksort and filtering operations, for instance. Solving partition in serial is trivial the problem we worked on is making multiple processors work together to efficiently partition an array. An interesting problem. Specifically, uh, we looked at solving this problem in a language-based model of parallelism with the primitive of a parallel for loop. This is similar to how Silk works. Um, here's a depiction of a parallel for loop and a serial for loop. A parallel for loop allows you to perform tasks x1 through x4 concurrently rather than sequentially. One really important thing to note is that we're not allowing algorithms that use locks or atomic variables in our model of parallelism. There's lots of really interesting parallel algorithms with locks and atomic variables, but it's theoretically interesting to ask what algorithms we can get without using these. So that's what we've defined a parallel algorithm as. Now let me tell you how we determine how good a parallel algorithm is. So TP, the time to run on P processors, is a very important metric. Two special cases are work, T1, and span, T infinity. Brent's theorem says that the work and the span of an algorithm together determine its performance on P processors for all P. Another important metric, which is also going to play a role in determining how fast our algorithm is in practice is cache efficiency. Cache efficiency, uh, a cache efficient algorithm is an algorithm whose serials implementation incurs 1 plus a low of 1 n over b cache misses in the disk access model. In order to be cache efficient, an algorithm has to perform a low number of passes over the data, not use extra memory, and simultaneously operate on elements that are close together in memory. So now that I've defined what a parallel algorithm is and how to determine how good a parallel algorithm is, let me tell you about the previous algorithms for the parallel partition problem. There's a very well-known algorithm called the standard, which we call the standard algorithm for this problem. It has theoretically amazing span of log n. Unfortunately, it's slow in practice. This is because it uses extra memory and makes multiple passes over the data. So this is bad cache behavior. On the other hand, we have algorithms that are fast in practice. There's lock-based and atomic variable-based algorithms that are fast, but we're not considering these. They're not in our model of parallelism. There's also the strided algorithm. This algorithm has no lock, doesn't use locks or atomic variables, and has great empirical performance. Unfortunately, it lacks theoretical guarantees. So this leads to our question. Can we create an algorithm with theoretical guarantees that is fast in practice in our model of parallelism for the partition problem. And our result is the smooth striding algorithm. We created an algorithm with three key features. First, it has linear work and polylogarithmic span. These are the same theoretical guarantees as the standard algorithm. Number two, it's fast in practice, just like the strided algorithm. And number three, it has theoretically optimal cache behavior, unlike any past algorithm. Now let me expand on, this, on these theoretical guarantees via comparing the smooth strided algorithm to the strided algorithm, which the smooth strided algorithm comes from. So the strided algorithm has good cache behavior in practice, which makes it fast in practice. However, there's some inputs, on which case it has very bad span, span linear. Uh, in particular, this means that it's not achieving any speed up despite how many processors you throw at it. So this is pretty bad. 
but on random inputs, it actually has a better guarantee of n to the two-thirds with high probability. On the other hand, we have the smooth striding algorithm. Our algorithm has provably optimal cache behavior instead of just empirically good cache behavior. It has span that's actually polylogarithmic with high probability in n. And it does all of this by using randomization inside of the algorithm. So it's not relying on randomization in the inputs, which is going to get rid of the worst case inputs. And it also, this randomization also allows us to have a new recursion step that was previously impossible. So to finish up, let me just show you a graph of the empirical performance of these algorithms that I've talked so far. So here's a graph of the speed up over a serial partition versus number of threads for the three algorithms we've discussed. As you can see, our implementation of the standard algorithm scales very poorly due to its bad cache behavior. On the other hand, the strided algorithm and the smooth striding algorithm both scale very well. The strided algorithm performs slightly better than the smooth striding algorithm. However, we've evaluated this on random inputs. The smooth striding algorithm has the additional nice property of having this guarantee for all inputs. So if you're interested in hearing about our cool application of randomization inside this algorithm, please check out our paper. Thank you.